that did not go as expected. <laughs> Just had to be on the big day. I've been skating for the last 10 years now. And on several occasions, I've even been called a pro skater by my mother. <laughs> but the board does a good job in reminding me that complete control is an illusion. We're all in control until we get slammed. Today, I'm going to talk about the slams that we all face in our lives and my humble effort to handle them. In the wee hours of the 22nd of December, 2023, the phone rang and I managed to say a sleepy hello. The next two minutes were a complete blur because 10,000 thoughts were flashing across my mind. Unfortunately, most of them were negative. You're all a witness to my unrealistic optimism, but at that moment, my optimism evaporated. Before I could process the news that my father had just been hit by a car, I already found myself packing my bags and browsing for tickets to Dubai. My mom was on the other end of that dreaded phone call. Thankfully, she kept me calm by telling me things like, Daddy has been hit by a car. He has injured his spine. There could be permanent damage. Like I said, quite reassuring. <laughs> As expected, there was complete panic on my side of the Arabian Sea. Within the next 10 hours, I found myself right beside my dad in Dubai. I have one perfectly timed picture from that morning. I was much relieved when I hugged my dad and verified that he had senses in his peripherals. I pinched his toe and was delighted to see that he snubbed me. I guess what I'm trying to tell you all today is that I'm the best son. Thank you very much. No, I'm just kidding. What I'm really trying to tell you is that health trumps everything else. All other demanding tasks naturally and spontaneously got deprioritized and only the health of my father mattered. On the way back home, my mind was filled with other thoughts like, Will daddy recover? What if he wasn't in Dubai? What happens to the people who aren't fortunate enough? Will I get an empty row on my flight? I did. <laughs> now, I don't know if it was a law of attraction or if I was just being spied upon because my eyes stopped at the news icon on my phone and I learned that there are 14,000 preventable deaths in the UK in just one year due to wait lists. That's about one life lost every 23 minutes. By the end of my TED talk, one person would have helplessly died in the A&D units in the UK. It's not just the UK, every country developed or developing faces its own unique challenges in delivering quality care to its citizens. Canada also has a problem with wait lists. Roughly 17,000 Canadians lost their lives while waiting for surgery or diagnostic scans in just one year. Let's talk about the US. It has different problems. The people who've been able to solve world sanitation problems have failed to solve the unexplainably high healthcare costs in the US. Studies show that half of Americans struggle to afford healthcare costs. While researching this, I learned that images can convey meaning so well. <laughs> it's not just them. Look at India largest democracy in the world. Indian regulators have solved a lot of big problems like cost control of life-saving drugs and keeping the cost of healthcare in general low. But the condition of the government-run facilities is such that one would opt for it if that's the only option. Additionally, around 30% of the population, over 400 million individuals are left completely devoid of health insurance. That's about the same as the population of the US, UK, and Canada combined. I'd like to share a story that deeply impacted me. Our domestic help, Ashwini, called to extend her stay at home. My mom, curious, asked why. And Ashwini shared with nonchalance that her sister had just passed away due to a simple fever. She's not being treated by a doctor, but rather by a local all-knowing Baba who charged 80 rupees or one US dollar while a real doctor would have charged $15 or 1,200 rupees. Despite having saved over $2,000 or 1.6 lakhs, the decision was made to go with the cheaper, unqualified option, 
and her sister's death was written off as destiny. This incident highlights the harsh reality faced by millions in India. Now the grass is always greener on the other side. It's often debated in the US that everyone should get healthcare covered by the government, while in the UK, endless wait lists are killing people. Another global problem often overlooked is fraud. Around $260 billion is lost globally due to health insurance fraud each year. In India, around 15% of health insurance claims are fraudulent. To put that into perspective, a rate of 0.25% for fraudulent transactions on a credit card is considered horrible. Keep in mind that fraud doesn't just affect the insurers, it also results in higher premiums for all innocent consumers. At least I hope you're all innocent. <laughs> Four years ago, when I was 12 years old, trying to be an adult, not succeeding with the hair, I started working on automation of various healthcare workflows. Today, I'm 16, still trying, but my journey brought out an overarching structure, the four A's. I promise it has nothing to do with my name. These are availability, that is the existence of resources, which are equipments, professionals, and facilities, awareness, the knowledge of what resources exist and what programs and benefits one is entitled to, accessibility, the ability to reach the desired service, and affordability, the ability to pay for your desired service. Assuring all of these would mean assuring quality care. Any problem that an individual faces which prevents him from receiving adequate health care can be classified into one or more of these four A's. Linking this with an earlier part of my talk, the problems faced by Ashwini, my domestic health, would be classified into the buckets of awareness and affordability. And I want to draw to your attention something which can help address these four A's. If you have a headache, you can search it up or go to one of those health websites, but what often happens is that you go in with a headache, but come out convinced you have a rare tropical disease with only three days to live. Uh, and how many of you all have a family member who's often in this situation? I know I got one. <laughs> there was a time when information was currency, but today mountains of knowledge are available publicly. Currency is now the ability to curate this information. Another issue is that most sites are either too authoritative and control all the information or are completely democratized and lack any outcome bias. I envision a balanced solution that merges the best of both worlds where every responsible citizen can contribute while being moderated, gamified, and outcome-driven. The outcome bias is crucial because without it, people like this guy will sign up and say that to cure your headache, you should make this TEDx video go viral. <laughs> I call this idea Vitazoi, which means life for life. The idea is that everyone can contribute where life just cares for another life, transcending all political man-made boundaries. Vitazoi has two parts running side by side, the contribution side and the giving of advice, just like Wikipedia, where anyone can contribute under moderation. In Vitazoi, anyone can contribute their expertise or experience, and anyone can receive advice. So far, I've spoken about how this contribution would work under a gamified system. Let me now show you a flow of the giving of advice that I'd like to give wings to. Uh, please tell me your chief complaint. I have a flat voice and a constant urge to clear my throat. Okay, how old are you? I'm 16 years old. And for how long have you been experiencing these symptoms? I've been experiencing them for around a week. Okay. Are you having difficulty in swallowing? Yes, I've had a lot of difficulty in swallowing. And um, did you do any activity which could strain the vocal cords? No, I did not. Are you experiencing other symptoms like heartburn or bloating? Yes, I am. 
This could be acute acid reflux rising up to the throat and causing irritation. Keep yourself hydrated and consider drinking soaked um, cumic water. If, this, if these uh, symptoms persist for two days, then please see a doctor. Now you all just saw me use Vitazoi. Some of you might be thinking, is this problem already solved? Have the Greeks and the Italians already made peace? Yes. But does Vitazoi, a collective where everyone can contribute and everyone else can reap the benefit, exist? Not yet. Whether you're an AI engineer, medical professional, or simply someone who likes to make an impact, whether you speak English, Russian, Python, or Bash, there's a place for you in this mission. Speaking of language, another problem that might come up is the language barrier. The English version of so many knowledge sources is far richer than that of other languages. How can we maintain a richness of knowledge across every language? We could attempt this by maintaining a language agnostic central knowledge pool and only vernacularizing the interfaces. That way, whether you speak Hindi, Swahili, or Klingon, you get your advice. Some may bring up the point of connectivity. First off, come on guys, we're in 2024. Connectivity is no longer a luxury, it's a necessity. Same with smartphones. The number of people with smartphones is only increasing. For the people who don't have smartphones, I propose kiosks, which could be funded by the community, ensuring a sense of ownership and offering a scalable model. So far, Vitazoi addresses availability, um, affordability, and accessibility simultaneously. Awareness is feeling a little left out, so let me share something which could help address that. Right now, at the end of an insurance claim, Patients typically receive three key details. That is the hospital bill, the amount that the insurance is going to cover, and the copay or co-insurance amount that they're responsible for. This is the, called the EOB, the explanation of benefits. This is how it currently looks. There's a complete lack of clarity as to how the hospital bill was divided between the insurer and the patient. This often leads to long phone calls with the call center, broker, or provider. How many have been in this situation? Okay, that's about half the room. Instead of this, imagine if we could break down every aspect of the patient's medical expenses. Picture something like this. I call this the dream EOB, where every aspect of the patient's medical expenses are explained. Room rent covers room charges, nursing charges, and boarding charges. You have a sublimit of $3,000 per day per claim as configured as per your policy. You've taken a room charging $3,260 per day. The difference of 260 will be deducted from the total hospital bill, and the rest of your charge heads will be, and the cover of insurance on the rest of your charge heads will be reduced in the ratio of 3,000 by 3,260, which is 7.98% burden on you. This will make the patients aware. I think, and I'm definitely biased that this is beautiful. Who all agree? Now, how many of you have been admitted to a hospital before? And uh, how many of you like being at the hospital? Okay, the one guy who raised his hands, if it's because of the nurses, I hear you. Now, how many of you all have had the experience of your discharge being delayed due to insurance? Okay, that's about one half or to two thirds of the room. The truth is that in India and many more countries, the discharge process often delays the insurance and it really tests the patient's patience. If technology can chat with you, help in information search, enhance global connectivity, I really believe we can make instant discharge a reality. And if we can achieve all of this, I think effective fraud control is not too far away. Reducing fraud would improve availability and affordability. Few fraud control mechanisms that I'd like to share include location tracking, ID verification, signature matching, and capturing a patient photo. Those who've had dengue and have consumed papaya leaf juice can relate with this. 
So far, I've spoken about the four A's, how we can all contribute to Vitazoi, how Vitazoi can then give medical advice, the dream EOB, making instant discharge a reality in the places where it isn't, and reducing fraud. I'd like to now mark the official start of Vitazoi by taking a selfie with its first audience. Would that be okay? Okay. Taking inspiration from JFK. Oops. Taking inspiration from JFK, I'll conclude by making this kid happy and saying that we choose to build Vitazoi in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills, because that challenge is one we're willing to accept one we're unwilling to postpone, and one we intend to win, and the others too. Control D from TEDx. Thank you, Dubai.